A few weeks ago, I sat down to get started on my home lab project. And in this section, I was trying to connect a Linux workstation to an Active Directory domain controller. So I went through the process of setting up and deploying this new Linux virtual machine. And after booting up this clean installation of Linux, I opened up a blank terminal screen to start my configurations. After a few moments, I started to realize that I had begun to forget the most basic commands like where the user accounts had resided or how to change a user local user account password. I sat at my desk thinking for a moment about how, you know, I published this introduction to Linux for cybersecurity specifically, Crash Course, just a couple months back and the very thing that I had been once a teacher of was the very thing that I was struggling with in that moment. In the state of information overload where there are so many concepts to learn and learning paths to pursue and learning options to decide on, it can become very overwhelming to decipher and to absorb all of this information and retain it. So today I would like to share some of the strategies that I've used in the past and some of the strategies that I'm continuing to use right now. For those of you who don't care about commentary, uh, which I understand, <laughs> uh, here are the five strategies I use to deal with too much information. But let's go ahead and get started with strategy number one. This strategy may appear to be very obvious, and in fact, all of these strategies are kind of obvious in a way. But this strategy, strategy number one, taking comprehensive notes, is not to be overlooked. When I'm taking an online course or studying from a book in particular, one of the first strategies I use is taking comprehensive, detailed notes. Taking notes is the proactive method. In the process of writing notes, obviously you're absorbing and you're writing down the information and you are in a way retaining that information. But it also creates a reference point for future uses. You can come back to those notes as a reference and as a review. And when you have forgotten something, you can say, oh, I remember learning about that in this course or in this particular section, and you can reference those notes. I take a look at my notes um, all the time with previous work notes like Linux notes, Python notes, whatever the notes is. I, I look at it all the time. I usually store up on Google Docs and you can do the same thing or you can do it on a binder. I used to have a binder. All kinds of ways that you can store your notes. Memorization can only take you so far. Being able to apply theoretical concepts into practical application connects the theory into practice. If you have been following me for a while, I always give this generalized advice, which is to apply what you are learning. And I talk about this because application is what makes the connection of taking a concept you vaguely understand in a classroom and maybe have a general concept of into a deliberate practice, a real world use. You may be thinking, that's great, but how do you, how do I apply my learning? Uh, oftentimes I stress side projects and little IT side projects or just little projects that you can work on. A simple Google search to find these projects will do. For example, if you were looking for a network security project, you could just look up network security side project and you would find a plethora of types of projects that you could work on. One of the tasks I'm working on right now is creating a catalog uh, and developing this a big list of side project ideas with an overview, some starting resources, and a recommended level so that they can offer a, a springboard or a launch pad to maybe create your own customized side project or use the one that I have listed in this catalog or archive. So stay tuned for that resource. Teaching forces you to break down a topic into easy concepts to understand. When you are in a state of teaching, you have to be able to understand the information in order to teach the information. Teaching reinforces the concepts you know. And this is part of the reasons why I'm kind of trying to do some of these crash courses. Uh, obviously, I'm not like trying to be an e-learning guru, but it's just a matter of teaching other people. And in that process, I get to teach myself or reiterate or learn myself. You may be wondering, how do I teach people? There are all kinds of ways. You can start a simple website blog. You can go on to medium.com. You can go on and create a GitHub account. 
Or you can teach a friend who wants to learn a little bit more about cybersecurity. You could make a YouTube channel and post tutorials on there. and Maybe it won't gain traction, but at least you are learning. There's many different ways and lots of platforms that you can use to really teach others. And you can do it all through online, of course. In my opinion, you're not going to be able to know everything about cybersecurity. And I'm sure there is something or some area you don't know about. <laughs> there are so many different areas that I don't know about. That's why I call myself a script kitty. But really, the industry is massive and there's a lot to learn. There's always something new to learn, in my opinion. Specializing in a specific area within the industry will assist you in your ability to know about a particular topic very, very well. So it may be like a computer forensics, or it could be a tool that you use, a cybersecurity tool. I have a buddy who uses a cybersecurity tool and he is extremely good and all he does is get contracted out by companies to work uh, with this tool in their company. Specializing in one area and then focusing on that area so you can become a subject expert is gonna help you become an expert in that area and know what you're talking about in that one area. Right now, as a cybersecurity student, I am not focusing on any specific area. Uh, I would call myself in the exploratory phase. I am exploring different areas of cybersecurity and seeing what I'm interested in. I encourage an exploration phase at the beginning for cybersecurity students or maybe some students in university or high school because you then you know and you're exposed to different elements of cybersecurity and you know what you truly want to do. But I do know that eventually I'm going to need to specialize and in specializing I'm able to know something very well. And in that, it makes you very marketable and unique within the industry. Alright, so this one is a pretty hard one for me to do myself is to admit when you don't know something. I talked about this lesson a few months ago in a video where I had a small little interview for a position on the cyber defense team on my university and my ego got in the way. I acted like I knew something when I really didn't. So admit when you don't know something. I think having humility within any industry or in just in life in general is important and it's often overlooked. And I think there's some some pressure, like there's actually a lot of pressure for you to know and appear what you like you're, what you're talking about, especially with something so sensitive like cybersecurity. It's it is important to know what you're talking about and to have an idea of how to solve a problem or whatever that is in your situation. But there is also a level of importance to, to saying to yourself or to other people that you don't know what you're talking about or that you don't know a concept or a term or an acronym. And when you don't know something, just admit it to yourself, acknowledge it, and then go learn it and use that potential learning opportunity. And here, here's just a quick example, maybe something that's not super relatable, but when I post videos on YouTube, specifically more technical videos about my side projects that I'm working on. Sometimes I get commenters who talk about things that I didn't do or services that I'm not using. They recommend this service or this service or they're talking about XYZ and whatever that is. And I have interpreted those comments in the past as people who are either trying to nitpick and take away something from my project or they're trying to show something like they show like hey, I know more than you they're in a comparison factor and I hope that I'm not in in any means trying to be a comparison person I'm just showing what I'm learning and I interpreted those and my ego gets in the way and I think one of the things that I've really come to acknowledge is that you know what I need to have humility and I can just learn from these people who are recommending me to do this or this or whatever it is the recommendation is and so I think that that is a really important lesson. Maybe a few of these commenters uh, are just trying to show you and top you with their knowledge. And look, you have it. You can top me with your knowledge. So having humility and just saying, I don't know it, is good. It encourages a learning opportunity. One of the mindsets that I, I try to assume is that everyone knows more than me. Everyone has something that they know that I have absolutely no idea of. And honestly, I'm totally fine with that because that encourages, for myself at least, a learning opportunity. And if your ego gets in the way and you're trying so hard to show or appear that you know something, 
then you are robbing yourself of a potential learning opportunity and not only that, but a connection with another individual, professional, or area within cybersecurity that you didn't know. So I think having humility, saying, I don't know it, I don't know this, is really important because then you can just move forward and you can learn and then move forward. I'm curious to know what kind of strategies uh, that you guys use. Uh, if you guys could share any, go for it. Um, so let me know in the comments below, uh, you know, get, get that YouTube algorithm. Uh. Anyways, I hope that you've learned something new in today's video or not, or learned that I'm a script kitty. Uh, yeah, but until the next video, I hope that you guys have a good day.